Good morning, folks. Several filament eruptions occurred on the sun. We've got electrostatic dust hopping, animal magnetism, and climate points here today. And we're starting with our star, and none of those Earth-facing filaments are the ones that erupted. Actually, a fair bit of stability to them at the moment. We are taking a minor coronal hole stream this morning as well, and you can see plasma speed rising in purple, but only to moderate range as it begins to peak. The sunspots are still numerous and turning through, but they have failed to produce anything since those low-level M flares over the weekend, and the magnetism of the sunspots helps us see why. Split magnetically at the big groups facing Earth, the southern incoming group has decayed slightly, and we will get a better look at the umbral versus surrounding magnetism at the northern incoming group by tomorrow. The eruptions went off the limb, as you can see here. We are still in need of monitoring the Earth-facing filaments for similar activity, as well as any morphology at those sunspots. Now, on to the articles. Up first is a big one, electrostatic dust hopping on asteroid Bennu. They correctly identified this as working on the moon as well, and it reminds us space is not a vacuum. There is constant exposure to photoionization, solar wind and cosmic rays, and the magnetism of the solar system and the galaxy. Folks, every mammalian identification of geomagnetic navigation, foraging, reproductive, and other homing patterns begins one way, with the identification of the north-south alignment during defecation. Yes, you heard that correctly. Veterans may remember those stories with dogs, deer, and others, and here we find it working with the big cats for the first time as well. Further study of the all-latitudes effects of solar storms. Interesting to see here how this group wants to investigate magnetotail effects when there are already well-known and several times published explanations involving the instant transfer through the ionosphere waveguide and the equatorward traveling waves driven by the strong auroral activity. Either way, yes, it's not just the polar region taking the solar storm effects. Some news commentary here. Folks, these grids wouldn't be in jeopardy if not for the new green push to stupidity. Not only bad science and bad policy, but ultra foolhardy given the risk of losing electricity every year because of virtue signaling vanity energy policy. Texas, thank a global warmest if you lose power. Of course, this season has brought much of the other side of the weather extremes to the planet as well, and while there are plausible windows within global warming to see more snow, the rate at which cold records are falling as well do not. The recurring appearance of cold records being smashed is indicative of the weather extremes of all kinds, more related to Earth's changing magnetic field than millionths of a fraction of chemistry. Even had a bit of that in the United States a couple weeks ago. And if you are new to the channel, the Climate Playlist is one of a couple excellent playlists found in the description box below the video. Catch up on more than a decade of research in about one day. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.